Are they confined to any one ethnic group? Yes. They're all in one organized... Uh... No, you don't get what I mean. I'm no matter the Italians, Irishmen, Polacks, or uh, Germans, or what? Well, uh, Are they confined to any one nationality? The bulk of them are Italian. Uh, there's no question about that. I see. But uh, the Jewish people, that, uh, some of the most successful bookmakers in the country are Jews. Yeah. Are they top people in the organization? Some of them are, yes, sir. Some of them are. Yes. Michael? We're bigger than U.S. Steel. They accuse me of making a president. They claim I have 50% of uh, Lebanon casinos. 50% of Monte Carlo. They needed an image. Hey, what's up, guys? I wanted to take a second to remind you, please hit that subscribe button. And if you like what we're doing and want to support the channel, you can do that via Cash App at American Made Channel. Now, let's jump into the video. Lucky Luciano was king of the hill, and standing beside the throne was Meyer Lansky. Excluded from the Italian Mafia because he was Jewish, Lansky was now calling the shots in New York anyway as Luciano's right-hand man. Vito Genovese, Lucky Luciano, and Meyer Lansky were some of the men who made up the commission, the Mafia's secret government. They were leaders of an empire that at the height of its power affected virtually all areas of everyday life. Are you pleased with the way your attorneys handled your defense? I'm sorry, but no comment. Well, you can't blame me for asking, can you? No, I don't blame you at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm with you. One thing a real die in the wool gambler looks for is a fair gambling operation. And Meyer was always fair. They were places that were patronized by the finest people and had seating capacity, some of them as high as 800 people. And some of the finest people of the United States patronized these places. Also, your big charity balls were held there. And usually every year, the proms from that area were held there. Their fathers and mothers. There were not any noobs in some corner or somewhere. They were known all over America for their food and entertainment. And the hundred dollar bills were that high. Oh, it was just incredible. Did I enjoy it? Oh, sure, it was profitable too. I'm telling you, he was as low key as they come. And shy and retiring. If you can visualize Meyer to be a shy and retiring, and he was shy and retiring. Anything that could be paid off with money, Meyer did not fear. Because as long as you could pay, pay off somebody or pay something somehow, that was satisfied him. Meyer said, Look, there's a way I can get out of this by paying a thousand dollar fine. So let's pay a fine. I said, Meyer, but the other boys that are going to be indicted with you, you're giving them criminal records and you're giving yourself a criminal record. But what's a thousand dollar fine? Pay it. I know that every time Meyer went to Cuba, he would bring a briefcase with at least a hundred thousand dollars. So Batista welcomed him with open arms. And the two men had such an affection for each other. Batista really loved them. I know because he brought, I guess I'd love him too, if he gave me $100,000 every time he saw me. I was single now for some reason. They needed an image. Well, actually, it started about 1965 when some newspaper man wrote an article that I have $300 million. Well, I wish I had a million dollars. I said, many more things, remember, have been said about me. They accused me of making a president. Now, I don't know Mr. Nixon any more than what I read in the newspapers. The closest I ever got to him is seeing him on television. They claim I have 50% of uh, Lebanon casinos, 50% of Monte Carlo. The 
Jews who sent me to visit Batista on a mission. Now, how ridiculous can we really get? Mr. Lansky, what does the name Jewish Mafia mean to you? You know, I never heard that until I read it in the Israeli newspapers. Why, it's most ridiculous. Are there many Jews in the uh, gambling business? Well, when you say many, you'd have to judge by percentage. I think if you took the percentage of the gambling business in the United States, took the Jews, you would find them maybe in their proportion. Why is it said that you are the head of the organized crime in the United States? Well, it's the same principle that started the other gossip. That's most ridiculous. I didn't know as I was growing older it's going to get worse. Is there, there an organized crime? Is there? Okay. I have no knowledge of it. Now, I have been under surveillance for many years now. Maybe for the last ten years. And I'm sure if these men didn't find anything against me who have every uh, every resource at its hand, they should know whether I am in any wrong activities or not. Mr. Jelsky, did you invest money in business in Israel or do you intend to invest money? No, I'm retired. And I would like to stay as a retired man in Israel, just like any other retired Jew. Okay. You can't say anything about what happened inside I can there? say a lot, but I'm going to reserve that for posterity. What do you think of this libel suit against Pat Penthouse that's going on in California? I have no opinion on that. You think your testimony is important to this trial? You better ask them. <laughs> I won't say any more to you, so don't waste your time. What has Meyer Lansky been doing with himself these days? Just what you see. Which is? That's another question. <laughs> keep him busy? I don't know if I keep busy or not, and I care less. When Lansky died, I don't think he had $300,000 to his name. And that sounds like a lot of money, but it was a mere pittance to a man that made millions. Oh, so long.